All right, welcome sport fans to another edition of Half Baked Sports. Oh, yeah, I'm your host Josh. I got my friends here that like to watch NFL. That's what we're covering mostly this uh, season. I got Chuck here on my right, Kendall here on my left, and uh, we're going to cover some of the stuff that we saw in Week One and Two. Yes. Uh, first thing I would like to know is uh, I'm almost kind of tired of the sloppy play that we've been seeing, especially with some of these uh, teams. It, it, it never fails. It, it huh. almost seems like if there's new additions to the team, huh. if it's a new coach to the team, it, it, it's almost like they're discombobulated. And I, is that? Do you think that's directly related to the preseason? Where they all it is is preseason is weeding out to yeah, get to your final fifty-three. They're still working out the kinks, man. I mean, third week now, they should have it pretty much down so far. If you look at it, four weeks in preseason, three weeks already into the regular season. You know, you're going to have a lot of ups and downs, and it's, it's already showing that. Yeah. I mean, quarterback well, issues yeah. to, to pretty much everybody, every yeah, position. Well, so what are your thoughts? Um, like like Kendall was saying, everybody's working out the kinks. Um, this is where you see where your draft, uh, drafting and your additions of the offseason come together. That's where you see if your formula works. So yeah, if it, if, it, I agree. if it pans out after week three, then yeah, it works. But then after week three, you see to, 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 uh, start to see it crumble. You know, it's not working. Mm-hmm. You got to adjust. Yeah. But, you know, most teams have problems adjusting mid-season. So. Yeah, and we do have true. to admit, this is a late video getting out. We've already watched some of the uh, games and highlights for week three. We wanted to get this video out earlier. And uh, they are right. We are seeing teams solidify. Uh, but even with that, I feel that with the... Uh, with the OTAs and uh, and the and the training camps prior to the season, I, I just don't see a need for the sloppy play. I mean, the holding penalties and I I think they should be more on point by now. Well, the refs are also calling something, calling more now than they done before. Because remember, that's true. Like a the lot tr- of the changes and the, the changes in yeah. the rules and stuff. So that's why uh, a lot of players are having trouble adapting to what the officials are going to call. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That is a good point. Um, other than that, the only other thing that's obvious that we need to talk about is the quarterback situations for some of these teams. I yeah. mean, Roethlisberger going down, Breeze going down. Roethlisberger's done for the season. Right. Uh, Ma- uh, Mason. Cal Rudolph? Mason Rudolph, right? Yeah, he's. Mason Rudolph, I thought it was Mason, Back up. Yeah, Mason Rudolph is the, is the second string. Yeah. Well. They obviously got a lot of faith in him. Uh, they went out and got uh, Minka Fitzpatrick as a as a safety slash cornerback from, uh, from Miami, Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they went out and I don't know who it was and I apologize, but they did go out and get another quarterback to uh, solidify their third string. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I have to admit when they put him in, he, he was able to move the ball. Um, do you think they have a chance with with this backup? I don't. I don't see on their schedule so far. Well, I mean, the real test is going to be uh, Baltimore. Baltimore, uh, the Chargers, because they have good top, like, top 10 defenses. Hmm. That's true. I mean, uh, they, they did, they're playing right now, and, of course, we'll have to see what the results of, of the San Francisco game. Mm-hmm. I think uh-huh. defensively that's going to be a true test for Mason Rudolph. That, that defense plays with some intensity. Uh, to to their schedule, I don't see how they, even with him, I don't see how they should lose the season. Uh, they should be at least eight and eight, nine and seven. Yeah, eight and eight, nine and seven, because they're playing uh, Cincinnati. Uh, then, uh, then they have Baltimore, Chargers, mm-hmm. bye week, Miami, Indy, uh, the Rams, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Cleveland, like. Yeah, uh, Arizona, Buffalo, and, and Giants. And unfortunately, and we did see Cleveland get exposed. Their their offensive yeah. line is not holding up and giving Baker Mayfield mm-hmm. enough time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to be a continuing problem throughout the season. Uh, so top defenses are going to be able to get to him. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well then that, that's at least good. And then now we understand why they didn't go out and get a QB. A and I have to admit, when I heard Fitzpatrick, I thought they went out and got Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean. I'm like, wow, oh, wow. That, that almost means you have no faith in your second quarterback. I, I was, yeah. But no, that was a mistake on my end. And, and honestly, it was kind of funny because I'm surprised one of my friends when I was talking to didn't pick that up. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so uh, other QB situations. Obviously, Drew Brees is Drew only Brees. out for what, four weeks? Six weeks. Might six be weeks, longer, six yeah. Weeks. But that's because he's trying to uh, get a second opinion. Oh, okay. So, I don't know. 
I mean, it depends on what the second opinion says. I think he's trying to avoid surgery. Yeah, yeah uh, that's I, can, gonna... I, I don't even blame him for that because yeah. obviously surgery is a big thing and that would yeah. require a lengthy uh, recovery time as well. So uh, surgery could potentially take him out for the whole season. Yeah. Yeah, but That's, even if even if he okay. is out, I I don't see like Teddy Bridgewater was never a a bad quarterback. No, no he just had no, bird, no, no. but he just had bad circumstances in Minnesota. Yep, like when he got that late hit and it just took him out for a couple of seasons. So for him being in the league as long as he has been for right. now, you know, him making that transition over to uh, the Saints, I think he may be okay. He'll just have to work out the kinks a little bit, get Pretty a much. get a feel. I mean, I don't think their season's totally over with, but I mean, it's gonna be. Kind of be a little shaky. No, right? NFC South is one For of those sure. things uh, that's that's a weird situation right now, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to avoid making commentary until after Week Four, uh, as we all know and have agreed upon. These seasons tend to go like quarters, so the first yeah. four weeks say a lot, and then of course the all the way up to the the halfway season mark. Then you start seeing teams start to pull away after the halfway mark. Right. And so I'm right. looking forward to our recap after Week Four. Um, and then I'll probably make my commentary on the NFC South. That's cool. Um, so I'll, for you guys, I mean, I know that you know some of these teams. Have, I haven't really played too many top-notch people yet, but some have. What's your most surprising two and O team right now? My surprise mm. is uh, San Francisco. Yes. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting two and <laughs> They're gonna do some damage this season. I mean. Coming back from, you know, two years ago before they got Garoppolo to when they got Garoppolo, now they're trying to just make sure they have a stacked team, rebuild. I mean, I think they're going to do some damage this year. Exactly, and I have to agree. The the most surprise is definitely San Francisco. Hmm. Um, you take a look at that first game against Tampa Bay. Oh, yeah. Was, what was it? Was it three, pick, three, <laughs> three picks off of Jameis Winston? Uh, yeah. Uh, two were pick sixes, if I'm not mistaken. So... Yeah, you can't win a game when you're turning the ball over, and they mm-hmm. and that defense on San Francisco plays with intensity. Yes, um, that's why I'm yes. looking forward to watching on Game Pass this uh, Pittsburgh game, uh, just to kind of see if that that intensity is carrying through. They do have Richard Sherman on that defense, yes, they do. Yeah, they and do. Uh, he always plays well. So uh, yeah, and I, I I don't have another another team, but I do want to make one commentary. What is your most surprising zero and two? Hmm. Let's, uh, well, I have to be the Steelers. Well, the Steelers, uh, outside the Steelers, because they had an unfortunate... Yeah, outside of the Steelers, Steelers. Uh, I think we can all agree yeah. that the Pittsburgh Steelers have different... Uh, well, their situation well, is different from everyone else. Let's Obviously, go. the expectations are always high in Steelers I would country, say but... Carolina. I would agree. Yeah, Carolina. Cam Newton, Cam Newton eight, eight straight losses. Yeah. Oh. Eight straight losses. And... Uh, Where's his I'm head at right now? That's what I would I like. Think, I think there's an untold <laughs> injury, and he's not because you, when you're seeing him playing, he's playing yeah. like he's been defeated. Ah, uh, like okay. he's mentally dealing with something while he's playing football. He's just and not it's talking like, about it's it. dragging on and on and on. Yeah, but the like, team is going, but he's just oh, this uh, is like a pain to just throw the ball. Like, right. Yeah, and the, the the concern that I had because watching that Carolina Thursday game with, yep. with Tampa Bay. He was definitely not himself. He was not taking the risks that he normally does. He did not play with the intensity that you normally see. And I know that he was coming from behind most of the game, but he was doing that against the Rams as well. And that was a game that they came back and scored within three points of the Rams. So with that kind of a a show in week one, you almost expected them to come out and win in week two. But I, I think because of this untold situation, like, cause even in the in, uh, the last play of the uh, Tampa Bay game, where he's on the goal line, what's his number one thing? He's gonna yeah. read. He's gonna read option, and he's gonna take it in. And he's gonna take it in. But he faked it off to that to the right. McCaffrey, and let, right? McCaffrey go in, oh. and that was just like what? Like, and then that we uh, the statistic was eighty nine percent of the time when he's on the goal line, he gets the touchdown. Eighty nine percent. I know. That was a high chance for you to get that touchdown. That was huge. So, I don't know. It's, it's some kind of injury with him. Yeah, be. mental and physical. Yeah, mentally or physically. <laughs> yeah. Another 0 2 team I'd like to bring up. Point, good point. New York Giants. Quarterback oh, yeah. issue, too. Manning, what's, what's going to be the fate of this guy? Well, and that's the sad yeah. thing. I mean, I, I have to admit, the last game that I saw from him, I was watching on the game pass as a consolidated. Uh, it was the week two game. I, I just didn't see much out of him. And, I, mm. and that could have been more due to the defense that he was facing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because it, you know it was that Buffalo game that that was surprising me huh. um, because that was a true test in my opinion for the Giants if they couldn't get past Buffalo mm -hmm. that that to me meant that there's definitely something wrong and I'm not surprised that they went with the the backup QB this week huh. um, which uh, which was Daniel Jones right um, the surprise that I did see was they did bench Ryan Fitzpatrick in Miami and they started with Josh Rosen. That was a bit of a shocker. That there. was a shocker because yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick, as everyone knows, may have a, a, a slight struggle here and there, but he always lights up one home game. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, I was expecting that this week, um, but that didn't happen. I right. would have started off with Josh Rosen in Miami, me personally, because he was a high draft pick mm -hmm. and everybody has nothing but good things to say about him. The Patriots wanted him or were trying to get him at one point. I don't see why I would start. You know what Fitzpatrick's about. Yeah. I would have him right. as a backup. So let's say uh, Rosa's not doing well. I'd have thrown Fitz magic in. Let him do his magic at towards the end of the game, win the game. Yeah, for some reason, he does seem to do better when he comes in as a backup. Yes. Uh, that was, a, that was the, the uh, cliche when he started here for Houston. Yes. Uh -huh. So... Um, well, he's been around too. He's, yeah, he's a journeyman he's QB. Too. He's been around several years. I mean, the, the sad thing is, is that he had a couple of starters, uh -huh. starting seasons here in Houston. He had a couple of starting seasons in Buffalo. Um, yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. yeah so sure. he's definitely had his opportunities. Uh -huh. and, I, and I have to admit, I, I liked what I saw in him. But I, the problem with, uh, with him, as we saw, was the consistency. Yeah. Either, either he couldn't adapt to the... Uh, to the defense that he was facing, or it could have been an offensive co coordinator issue to where it was play calling. Um, a journeyman like him, they never give him the full responsibility, so that would have fell to his uh, offensive coordinator. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, so, he's trying to find a home. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and, and of course, at this point in his career, he may not, he may be looking at retirement too. I mean, he's got to be in, what, 14, 15 years in the league, at least. Yeah. That thing. Think, but I don't think he's looking for a home. I just think he's comfortable he's just with playing, playing because games. he gets more money. Or he gets more, more. He gets more guaranteed money, just like Kirk Cousins. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I get more guaranteed money just going year to year. Yeah, that's true. But at least Kirk Cousins fell down with Minnesota, and they're doing well this year. So uh, Minnesota with uh, Kirk Cousins seems to be a happy, uh, happy marriage for now. <laughs> we'll see how the season <laughs> plays out. That's points, well put. Points say otherwise <laughs> to me. If I could give you a hundred something million, you better be giving me thirty points a game. <laughs> right, yeah, right. right. right? Not struggling, give me seventeen. All right. Hey, uh, <laughs> those are the two main points, or the few main points that I wanted to cover. Um, anything you guys want to cover right before we uh, close this out? Uh, what about out of who? Who do we think are AFC and NFC favorites? Like, to the oh wow. Well, I, I would have to say. NFC right now for me is still a little wide open. We haven't seen anybody break away. Even the Rams look a little vulnerable. Philly lost one already to, to Detroit, this, as we saw earlier today. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when it comes to the NFC, I'm not sold on any one team yet. Uh, however, the AFC is pretty clear. Uh, it, even with the first two weeks, uh, it's Kansas City, New England. But uh, Baltimore is a close close in that uh, they, they kept the close game with Kansas City today and they will be a close comp, uh, competitor here uh, as the season progresses. Uh -huh. So that's one to keep an eye on. Um, New England? But yeah, unfortunately, that, that New England, Kansas City, We're and Baltimore, solid. it's going to be one of those three for the AFC. Oh, you got Baltimore now. I was going to say Chargers. But. I, you know, I want to say Chargers, but right now they have the Melvin Gordon holdout. Now, they've uh -huh. been able to maintain some of the running game uh, without him, okay. but... Uh, but with him, they're just a different dimension. Plus, they they were without one of their defending uh, defensive players uh, week one and two. Uh, he should be back here uh, within the next couple of weeks. And um, once that comes back in together, then we could probably have that conversation uh, because he has to go through Mahomes twice. Oh, and if I'm not yeah. mistaken, he's playing uh, New England. Let me take a little quick look here because we do have Pittsburgh coming up. That'll be a good test, but. Um, no, they don't play New England. But we have Green Bay, Chicago, oh. Jacksonville, Minnesota. Yeah, I, we have our work cut out for us. I'm saying they could make it with a 10, 10 and 6 season. If they go 9 and 7, I think somebody else is going to get in. Oh. Yeah, it, 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 it matters in the end. The yeah. numbers, you know, that's going to call it wins the losses. And let's not even start including those ties. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oakland Oakland has been known to come up with an upset here or there, especially in Oakland. 
and Denver is tough in you know late in the season. So uh -huh. I mean, when you when you add those two factors, uh, Rivers Rivers has to be on point here. Uh, I mean, they've got a nice game going with Houston right now, and we'll see what the end is of that one. But yeah. with Pittsburgh coming up and some tough competition in the NFC North, right? Yeah, he's right, got right. his. Yeah, and he's already lost to Detroit, so that's going to be a mark against him. Hmm. But don't get me wrong; I am rooting for my boy Rivers. He's <laughs> uh, <laughs> doing good. Yeah, well, good. if he doesn't get a ring, I'll get it for him on Madden. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, I think that pretty much sums it up. Thanks for joining us. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be releasing another one after week four. We're out. All right. Y'all be easy.